Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, September 29th, 2023. I'm Donna Will, Professional Development Coordinator for the Maryland Department of Health's Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the monthly series of DDA updates with Deputy Secretary Bernie Simons. Deputy Secretary Simons is out today and Nick Burton, our Director of Programs, will be reviewing today's agenda. On the panel today, we have Nick Burton, Director of Programs, Robert White, Director of Operations, Rhonda Workman, Director of Federal Programs, Leslie Thompson, Assistant Director of Programs, Dr. Yamonja Smalls, Director of Professional Development. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants are in listen-only mode. There are two options to hear the webinar by computer and phone. And if you look at the panel interface on your right labeled audio, you can click either computer or phone to switch for the best option. We have a handout for this webinar, which can be downloaded from the handout section, or if you're listening by phone, you can request that they be emailed. We will be recording the webinar and posting this session on YouTube and the DDA website. Today's PowerPoint has also been uploaded as an attachment and is available for you to download in the webinar panel box. Questions can be typed in the question or chat box in the webinar panel and we will get to those towards the end of the presentation. So now I'd like to introduce Nick Burton, Director of Programs. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Donna. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the opening and the introduction. Um, we go to the next slide, actually. Give me just a second. All right, no problem. Um, so thanks everyone for coming. Um, Bernie's out today, but I'm gonna do my best to cover the agenda and um, a couple other things. So today we are just gonna have some general updates in terms of um, kind of the things coming up in the month of October, and then just also touching in on DSP Appreciation Week that we just had and some of the uh, activities that are going to continue in regards to that into the month of October. And then Rhonda Workman will give some updates on federal programs. Leslie Thompson will give some updates on programs. And then to round us out, Robert uh, White will be giving some uh, updates related to his area of oversight, which is operations. Um, it's a pretty quick uh, presentation today, so uh, we will probably have an ample amount of time for questions if there are any at the end of, of the presentation. So why don't we go to the next slide, please. So just on behalf of DDA and the administration, I, I we just want to say thank you to all of the direct support staff and, you know, we direct support professionals week as a week out of the month. But, you know, I think Bernie has said it, I've said it, we've all said it, 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 it the thanks is continual throughout the year. They work so hard. Uh, we support um, them being a profession. Uh, we, we thank them for the, the long hours, the evenings, the overnights, uh, the, the champions, their mentors, their uh, employment professionals, they're, they're, they're doing really wonderful and amazing work out there. And it was so fantastic to see how all of the agencies um, celebrated their direct support staff. And um, I know that many of you submitted uh, recommendations for the DSP recognition awards through the Department of Disabilities, and we've often partnered with them and there will be some more information coming out about future <coughs> recognition of those awardees for some time in October. So continue to uh, monitor uh, the Department of Disabilities, social media and communication, as well as ours for uh, how we'll continue the DSP recognition and celebration into the month of October. Um, next slide. I think with that, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Smalls. Okay, um, so I'm gonna to talk just a little bit about our plain language and our excitement around the training that we've put together. 
um, whether it's sharing guidance policy or answering questions that people have, we communicate a lot of information to a lot of different people who process information differently. And we heard your concerns, and so the DDA has partnered with the DD Council to bring you, let's say it simply, plain language training. Um, we're committed to communicating in a way that you can understand, um, and we're excited. And we already had an internal training with the DDA um, Department of Disabilities and the DD Council, and, and even practice with, with some of the things that are written on our own DDA website, which was surprising for a lot of us. Um, so want to thank you for understanding that this will be a gradual process, but we're working hard to update the website, our policies and guidance, um, and general communication. Want you to stay tuned. Um, we are using some of the feedback from that initial training um, to then op offer you all a virtual training that um, will be hopefully in the next month or so. So please stay tuned. We're really excited about that. Next slide, please, Donna. Okay. Um, October is, uh, we're celebrating a lot of things. October is National Disabilities Employment Awareness Month. Um, which is a time for us to recognize the importance of ensuring all people have equal opportunity to contribute their skills and talents. This year's theme is Advancing Access and Equity. Um, for more information, you can click this link here and it will give you some additional info. Um, and also, in last week's newsletter, and we'll also be putting in uh, next week's newsletter, we ask for you to share your employment stories with us as we'd like to highlight your successes. Um, we know that it can be challenging. I've already gotten some feedback at you know, just how um, finding the kind of employment that you're wanting can be, um, can be difficult at times. And we believe that um, you sharing your journeys may be an encouragement to others. Um, so links to share that will, again, be posted in next week's newsletter as well for you. Next slide, please, Donna. Okay. October is also Down Syndrome Awareness Month. Um, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Pre Prevention, about 6,000 babies are born in the United States each year with Down syndrome, making it the most common chromosomal condition associated with intellectual disabilities. So for more information, you can click here um, for additional um, updates and information there. Thanks. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Rhonda Workman to give you um, our federal program updates. Thank you, Yamanja, appreciate it. Good afternoon, my name is Rhonda Workman and I am the Director of Federal Programs for DDA. Today we'd like to share some reminders related to the DDA Operated Waiver Program policies and redeterminations. Next slide, please. This slide is a reminder that the DDA is seeking public input on our proposed Behavior Support Services Policy. You can access the proposed policy using the link provided on this slide. And just a reminder that the public comments will be accepted through today, September 29th. You can submit your comments electronically to the DDA dedicated email address, which we've noted here on the, wet, on the slide. And you can also mail your comments to the DDA Federal Programs Unit at 201 West Preston Street, Baltimore. Next slide, please. This slide is a reminder and update related to the Medicaid check-in and specifically redeterminations. It is important for you to look for communication that will be coming from the Maryland Department of Human Services related to redeterminations, these are Medicaid redeterminations, and to respond to them within the required timeframe. We have been advised that for people with redetermination due dates, scheduled for August, September, and October of 2023, that if a redetermination application was submitted, that the application will be processed. If a redetermination application was not or is not submitted, these redeterminations will be moved to November of 2023 to provide additional opportunities to provide that information. 
For support with this process, please reach out to your coordinator of community services. We have also included a direct link to the Maryland Medicaid check-in website where you can find additional information related to the Medicaid check-in. I'm now going to turn it over to Leslie to share some updates related to programs. Next slide, please. Good morning. Thank you very much, Rhonda. Um, again, my name is Leslie Thompson. I'm the Assistant Director of Programs with DDA. I'm excited to be here with you this morning and to share some really um, awesome updates as it relates to programs. Next slide, please. So um, we've been talking about this for a long time and we are still um, rocking and rolling. So the LTSS transition, um, some really exciting updates here. So as of October 1, so right around the corner, which is unbelievable, um, we will be 52% all in as of October 1st. So that means we have 52% of our providers will be fully transitioned into LTSS for billing. Um, by January of 2024, we will hit 63% all in, so making great strides between here and the end of the year. Um, a really kind of special milestone that we wanted to share with everyone, um, as of October 1st, Western Maryland, or Western Maryland region will be 100% transitioned into LTSS for billing. They will be the first region fully in. So congratulations to, to Western Maryland. Um, lastly, in regard to the transition, we still have early adopter group technical assistance available. So if you're a provider who has partially transitioned or hasn't transitioned um, at all yet, um, please feel free to use this link here to make a request to be connected with um, one of our early adopter providers. Um, you know, we, we try to match you up with with a provider who's similar or who has has similar um, service setups, um, similar staffing setups. So it's 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 really a great opportunity to, for you to learn um, from from your peers. Um, and I just also want to extend a huge thank you to all of our partners um, as we've been working through this journey. Um, the dedication and, and hard work has just been amazing to see. And we are under a year to go, everybody. So hats off to that and looking forward to the next several months of this process. Next slide, please. Some other exciting things we have going on. Um, we are working on making enhancements to the person-centered plan. Um, we have a person-centered plan enhancement committee that has been uh, meeting regularly since May of 2023. Um, and that group consists of various stakeholders from all over, all over the state. So there are self-advocates, family members, CCSs, um, provider agencies, our community partners. It's a really great diverse group that's really looking at, at the current process, the current form in LTSS um, with a critical eye and from their area of expertise to figure out you know, what we can do to enhance it even more. Um, so currently we are working to, um, that committee is working to finalize um, a PCP template and their recommendations for that. And then we will um, take those recommendations and move towards reviewing any system revisions that will be needed um, in the coming months. So more to come on that, but so far we've made great strides and we're excited to share more progress with you um, as we move forward. Next slide, please. Um, just we've we've um, communicated this in a, a number of, of venues, but just a reminder, um, since October 1st is right around the corner, as I said earlier, um, under DDA's traditional service model, um, as of October 1st, Respite Care 15 Minutes, um, formerly known as Respite Care Hourly, will become a service billed through EBV, or the Electronic Visit Verification System. Um, just to remind everyone, Respite Care Daily and, and Respite Care Camp are not required um, for EBV. And if you, you know, want some additional information, um, feel free to reach out to your regional office, or we also have a great resource here um, linked for you in, in the slide deck. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next slide, please. All right. We have some health and incident reporting updates for you. So October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. As we all know, and it, but it bears repeating, breast cancer screenings truly do save lives. 
Um, so, you know, please make an appointment for a clinical breast exam or a mammogram today. Um, and for more information on, on breast cancer awareness, we've linked the CDC's website. There's some great resources there and great information um, as we enter into this, this important month. Next slide, please. All right, I think we're all well aware of this too. Seasonal viruses are upon us. RSV, COVID, the flu. Um, everyone six months and older should get vaccinated every season, especially people who are at higher risk. Um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, there are updated COVID-19 vaccines from Pfizer, Biotech, and Moderna that, that will be available this month. Um, and as a reminder, which we'll talk about this a bit more in a second, um, COVID-19 is a reportable disease, as are uh, you know, other communicable, communicable diseases defined by the Maryland Department of Health. Um, and just to add one more note, if you are over 60 or pregnant, um, ask your doctor about the new RSV vaccine. Next slide, please. So a little bit more on reporting, um, just as a, a, we had a communication go out in our newsletter last week, but we wanted to follow up on that as reminders. So for reporting COVID-19 per the Policy on Reportable Incidents and Investigations, or PORI, please remember to use these following guidelines um, in, in reporting. So two or more cases of positive COVID-19 in people or staff members within 10 days in the same setting, <clears throat> excuse me, um, report incident um, incidents for people in PCIS2, um, still using incident reporting in that system, and then also make sure to notify your DDA regional office quality enhancement team via email for staff reports. Um, please, if you have any questions about that or need technical assistance, please make sure to contact your uh, regional office quality enhancement team, and they will be more than happy um, to help you out and, and offer any guidance they can. Next slide, please. All right, well, that's it for me. I will now turn it over to Robert White, um, our Director of Operations. Robert? Yes, thank you, Leslie. Next slide, please. So just a few updates um, for today. Um, reminder related to the audited financial statements. So for FY 2022, um, the audited financial statements are due no later than tomorrow. Um, and then, as we mentioned before, for FY23 moving forward, they'll be due um, December 31st. So for FY23, uh, they're due by the end of this year, December 31st, 2023. And again, please submit them to the dda.providerdata at maryland.gov email address. And if you have any questions, reach out to Nick Kapoor. Next slide. So just wanted to remind folks that we did um, get a copy of the FY2024 rates for fee for service billing that occurs in LTSS Maryland um, with the actual brick components posted to our website available using the hyperlink here. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to the rate review advisory group email address um, listed here on, on this slide. Thank you everyone. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Nick. Thanks, Robert. I had to find that on mute button. Uh, so here's the link to register for our monthly webinars. Um, the next webinar is October 27th, 2023 from 1030 to 1130. Um, certainly after you register, you'll receive confirmation email regarding the webinar. Um, and I believe now we are ready for questions from uh, folks. And Dr. Smalls, are you or Donna facilitating questions today? Donna, are you helping out with questions today or will that be Dr. Smalls? Um, I guess I can do it. <laughs> All right, I, uh, you wanna start then? I think we've got a few in the chat box. I have them pulled up, so I'm happy to do them yeah. as well, Donna, if that works for you. 
All right. Well, we got we got a few. Um, all right. Are Medicaid redeterminations still supposed to show up in LTSS? 90, 60, and 30 days. And that would Donna, be thank you long. for sharing that question. Um, this is Rhonda. I think I'll I can add information here. Um, Medicaid redeterminations are supposed to be in LTSS. We are working on enhancing that information um, and getting a more direct feed from the Medicaid system. With the Medicaid check-in, um, redeterminations um, were spread across um, a 14-month period, um, and so some of the redetermination dates may have changed. We are currently in the process of getting a um, report to give us an update related to any of those changes, and we'll be sharing that with um, our coordinators of community services agencies so that they can better support individuals and families. And Donna, since you're driving the webinar, I'm happy to do the questions for you in, in, to, to help out in that way. Okay. That work? All right, great. So this next one, we will uh, be for Leslie. Leslie, what is the policy for incident reports for incidents outside of provider hours or care? Should the CCS be responsible or provider? That is a great question, um, and Nick, I, I might I might lean on you a little bit, um, but if it's outside of the provider hours um, or, or their support time, um, it should be the CCS's responsibility, but I think it's important to note that there should continue to be that open communication and collaboration um, between the CCS and the provider, um, given, you know, they would potentially be going be be on leave, if you will, from the provider while they're positive. <clears throat> yeah, and I think in just <clears throat> general too, I would say it, it it might depend on the situation. So, um, if the if the question asker wants to reach out to me directly, we could have more of a conversation about that if there's a specific situation. Um, but certainly, you know, if you're not providing care to the person, you may not know an incident that occurred. And if you hear about it, you know, you certainly could report it or talk to the CCS. It doesn't hurt to report. Um, we want to just make sure those things get in there um, so that they can be tracked and monitored and followed up on. Okay. Um, Robert, I think this next one's for you. Um, are the financial statements due for all providers? Um, the answer is yes. So if you're billing exclusively in PCIS2, um, the finan audited financial statements are usually submitted with the cost report. And if you're billing exclusively in LTSS, uh, then the um, audited financial statements are required. So yeah, all providers who are receiving DDA revenue would be required to submit those audited financial statements. Perfect. Thanks, Robert. Robert, this might be a, a much larger question that probably could be its own webinar, but I'll let you kind of decide that. Um, there was a question on whether you can further explain what the BRIC rates are. Is this just identifying how the rates were established? Yes, you're right. That would be beyond the, the, the scope of this webinar, but if you can send me an email, I can certainly send you the link. Um, that goes uh, that uh, the link to the actual study that was done uh, relate that explains the the brick methodology and, and how that works. It's available on our website, but I'll can send you the the link directly if you send me an email. I'll okay. put my email in the chat. There are some self-directed questions and. I'm gonna hold on the self-directed questions right now for one very important reason. One is um, we have communicated to folks that we are working on scheduling a monthly self-directed services meeting that will start in October and an invite will go out for that tomorrow. We will also be seeking input on um, agenda items for that meeting. Um, we'll also have an update on the regional 
listening sessions that we will be providing, as we stated before, at that meeting as well. And as I'm looking at it, um, we do not, oh, here we got one more in. Robert, when will the FY23 cost report template be available? That, let me follow up. I believe we committed to by the end of this week, but let me follow up just to be sure. Okay, great. All right, I'm checking here. This might be a record webinar for us. Half hour. I think that I think uh, we we are we got through all the questions that came in. So with that, um, I I hope you all have a really wonderful Friday and. Certainly, if you have additional questions, don't hesitate to send them to us. Um, it's supposed to be beautiful and sunny this weekend, so go take advantage of that because I think fall and pumpkin spice latte season is here, so we might not have many more sunny days like that. So have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend, everybody.